Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In this video, we're actually going to be creating an Active Directory service. So in, in our last video, we actually created a Windows VM. So we're going to use that VM, create an AD server, and then you get to play around with Active Directory users, groups, and computer stuff. So um, we're just going to be setting up the Active Directory server, and then in later videos, we'll show you how to hook up like your Linux VM or like another Windows Server VM to the Active Directory server, and then you can kind of log in and control um, users and groups that way. So uh, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So enjoy the content. Love kind of what I do here. Want to send me some free swag or sponsor me? Uh, my email is in the description below, so send me an email. All right, let's get started, guys. Okay, so um, the first thing we'll want to do here is actually just update the server name. Um, this makes it a lot easier because when you change the root group, work group, everything just kind of works a lot better. So we're going to change this and call it 80 um, is the computer name. Pantry duplicate on the network, you should choose a different name for this. Um, that's fine. It's fine. All right. And then we will also edit our zone here. So make sure you update the serial number, 66. Six. We're name it AD, not address, AD guys. AD for Active Directory, I don't want to type Active Directory, so I call it AD. Um, <laughs> that's gonna autocorrect to AD. <laughs> and 145, okay. So commit add AD server. There it goes. Just, just a little, little bit slow. I had to restart like my whole home lab yesterday because I, I needed to add um, a, a UPS to it. Um, so I'm wondering if it's just slowly caching everything as I'm going through this, which is fine. I mean, I don't, I don't need it to be like quick, quick. Okay, so we updated the host name. Now we need to make sure the IP actually points to the correct IP here. So let's statically set the, the IP. When it logs back in, oh yeah, passed, woot. Always good to see. So we will open the network settings. Let this load here, change adapter options. And 192.168.1.1. Leave that as that, 192.168.1.1, and then point to our DNS server, 131. Validate, close, it's okay, this is gonna pop up, it's good, there's actually no problem, so, so don't sweat it. Okay, so now that that is set up, so now we have 80 is our, our server name, we got the static IP, we can now set up the, uh, add the role, so this add roles and features. So we're just gonna do a role base or feature based installation. Um, yep, using the server in the server pool. And then there's a lot of active directory stuff. What we're going to actually be focused on is domain services. ADDS is what they call it. Um, most people just call it AD because that's really what you just use it for. So you click that, it will also include a few other things if applicable. So we're gonna just allow that. We don't need to work on any of the features. There's no additional features. Um, that need to be added outside of the ones that would have been already said. So we're going to add it, click next. Um, there's a, a restart isn't required um, for this install, but a restart will be required for after we promote the server to be a domain controller. But you can always check this in case you're like, hey, whatever, just let it restart if it needs to restart. Um, so, okay, so we will let that install. It may take a few minutes here. Uh, let's close some stuff out while we wait for that. But the nice thing about Active Directory is essentially Active Directory is kind of like your single point of um, authentication method, right? So like, say you're managing a group of servers that's like, you know, there's like a hundred servers, right? And each server, everyone needs an individual login. You don't want to go through every single server and manually add each person's login to that server because that's just a lot of work makes no sense and you might as well just hire an intern to do it at that point right so Act directory kind of fills in this gap where you essentially have this server that's 
Active Directory. And then you have all your other servers, which reach back out to the server to go, hey, I see this person logging in with this user. Are they allowed to log into this server with this user? Yes let them log in with, with their credentials. So it, it uses this as an authentication server. All right, so that finished. So now you'll see that there's a really yellow um, caution warning sign here um, with this flag for notifications. So what happens is it installs all the things to make it allowed to be a, a domain controller. Now we need to actually make it a domain controller. So we'll click promote. We're going to actually add this to a forest and our forest name will be dragon.local. So this is essentially like, what is the domain you want this to be named? We're going to want it to be named dragon.local. You can name it whatever you want, your corporation, corporation whatever, whatnot. That's, that's all you guys. In this case, we're going to do dragon.local. So we'll click next here. Um, so forest functional, uh, functional level, domain functional level. This is actually more for like, I believe, um, for like compatibility version. So like if you want this domain for us to work with like 2008, you can put 2008, but we're, we can not build anything that old. So we're just going to leave it at 2016. Then you got the directory services restore mode password. I've never had to use this, but I believe this is essentially if you completely like break AD and you need to like restore it, this is the password you would use. So don't lose this password. <laughs> or save it in your password manager in case you ever do need to use it. <laughs> then we'll leave that as, as default. The net BIOS is essentially what will show up. So like when, when you go to your domain type situation, you have, you can type in like domain slash your, your domain. So in this case, dragon slash, and then username, this is what it would be. So we're going to just leave it as dragon. That's totally fine. We'll click next. Then you got all your database and location for files. Um, you can leave this as default unless you really want a different location. <laughs> then you get this whole uh, review your selections. We're pretty good, so we'll click next. And then it will verify prerequisites for your domain controller operations. So most of these are warnings. You can see that these are yellow. Um, I believe. Um, if there was an actual error and something you had to address, it would be red and it wouldn't let you click the install button. Um, so in this case, I mean, we got some DNS and, and algorithm stuff. I'm not too worried about it. So, but you probably in, if you're doing this in a production environment, you should probably address every single thing that is yellow, unless you know why it's yellow. Um, so, but in this case, we're just going to install because it'll be fine. I'm not going to utilize any of that or worry about the crypto algorithms right now. So we will click install. This may take a few minutes. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll end up doing like more videos, um, that will, that I'll show you how to connect another Windows server to the domain and as well as like my Linux box. That one will be interesting because it's been a long time since I've done that. Um, connect a Linux uh, box to AD, um, mainly because I now kind of just use root in my home lab. Okay, so it's going to sign up because um, Active Directory was installed, so it's going to actually restart the server. So now the server is su successfully configured as a domain controller. So now it's now it's called a DC. Actually, we should have named it DC instead of AD. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Because it is a domain controller, it's just running Active Directory on it. Um, namings this is this is why i i work in tech guys i'm not good at naming so like yeah <laughs> all right so this should boot back up the spinny wheel and when it loads god i need to make these computers fast these vms faster um, but yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of, and, and actually the other fun thing is hooking up services to use a, uh, LDAP authentication with AD. Um, the one that I can think about right now that we have in our home lab is actually GitLab. GitLab actually offers an AD, uh, LDAP integration. Um, so you can actually use Active Directory users to log into GitLab. Um, this is very important because managing GitLab users in GitLab is a pain. 
um, especially when you have to like add or remove users. I mean, really the removing part because you don't really remember to remove them. But usually, um, the the big thing about um, using AD and espe especially when I use it in cyber defense competitions, there were, there would always be a scenario in which they would tell us that this like admin, uh, like uh, sys admin user was getting you know laid off or fired you need to remove them from all your all your servers um if you use ad then you just have to remove it from ad and then it'll sync and and essentially whenever tr anyone tries to auth with it you don't have to worry about it but if you had that user created on every single server you would have to log into every single server and delete that user and hope you didn't miss that user um in your deletion process. So it really does streamline, you, uh, you know, just use authentication because essentially one place, if if they're there, they can log in. If they're not, they can't log in. So um, it's actually quite nice to just be able to do that. I would highly recommend setting up an AD server if you ever have to do like a cyber defense competition or anything that requires user management. Um, there is other servers that you can do um, that are um, AD, but like Linux AD. Um, I can't remember what they, they, they were called um, because there was actually other... <laughs> equivalent. Radius, Radius was it. That's, that's another thing that you could set up, um, but I, I would say AD is probably just the Windows AD is is pretty popular because that's kind of like what most corporations or companies would use. Um, you could set up a Radius server, um, but I'm not doing that in this video. So, <laughs> but if you want me to set one up, let me know. I've never actually set one up myself. Okay, now this is gonna just take forever. So I was hoping to just talk it through and hopefully it would come back in like 20 seconds. But we're just gonna fast forward this video to the point when this is ready. All right, and now we're back. It actually took, I think about five minutes. I was actually kind of surprised. Actually, you know, I mean, overall, I think it took four five minutes. So I was kind of surprised by how long it actually took. <laughs> um, but now you can log in. Um, so now you can see how it says dragon slash administrator because now it's using the administrator user on the domain. Um, you can obviously log in as other users, but we don't have any other users configured, so it wouldn't matter and it wouldn't work. So we're going to log in <clears throat> and I'll show you how to create a user here with Active Directory 2 um, because we're going to essentially utilize that user to be kind of our um, user to hook up to all the uh, all the services to this AD uh, server. So, okay, so this will always pop up. All good. So if we actually go down here, open it up, there's administration tools. And there's Active Directory users and computers. You can also search for Active Directory, but you want users and computers. So we'll click on that real quick. So now you can see we have the domain level, dragon.local. In this, we have multiple directories um, where we have containers, uh, computers, controllers, and users. So we're going to focus on the users one right now. Um, and we will create a new user. Um, so we will create a new user. We will name it Dragon. I leave the full name Dragon too. The login will just be Dragon. So we got Dragon slash Dragon. <laughs> um, we will set the password. And we will just leave it that password never expires because I actually set a legit password. This is useful for if you ever have to like reset a user's password. Um, in like a corporate environment, having this checkbox to user must change password next login forces them to change it on the next log next login so they never keep the temporary password. <coughs> but in this case, because I already know what password I want to use, I'm just gonna set the password number expires and not worry about it. So now we'll finish it. Now you can click on the users. Um, the important thing here is to figure out what membership you want these your users to be in. So if you're gonna be like a domain admin and have pretty much admin functionality on any server or whatnot, you want to add the domain admin group. Domain admin. Um, 
and set it as primary group. And then you can remove domain users because then at that point you don't need it. But for everyone else, if they just need access, but they don't necessarily need need access, like admin access, you can just leave them as domain users and then they'll just have, you know, default domain users privileges. Um, there's multiple ways to configure permissions in AD. So it's not necessarily, oh, hey, if you're, you know, a domain admin, you get this. And if you're a domain user, you only get this. You can actually customize how you want to, you know, set it. Like maybe you can set domain admins have SSH access on a server, but domain users don't, right? So like there's a lot of ways to kind of do groups and whatnot. We're just going to leave it as kind of using domain admins as kind of our admin group and then domain users as our user group where they can like log in and do stuff but not have admin privileges. Um, but you can create other groups. Um, there is nothing wrong with creating other groups and then utilizing that group for something else. Like you can create a GitLab admin group and use that for GitLab. That's probably what we'll do for GitLab actually. But in this case, we're just gonna leave it as domain admin. So what you can see here is we can actually switch users. I guess we might have to actually sign out. So we can sign out. Now we can actually log in as another user. And you can see how it says sign in to Dragon. That is that means it's signing into the Dragon using the Dragon domain. So I don't actually have to do I don't have to actually do Dragon slash Dragon, right? Um, I can just do Dragon. Now you can you can do something like this too, and you can see how it says switches, hey, it's Dragon ASDF domain, right? So essentially if you do something like this with this slash it tells you that's the domain I want to log into, right? Um, but by default, the domain will be Dragon um, for me. So if you type in the password in right, it will log you in. <laughs> if you don't, it will fail and tell you that, that you failed. So now you can see I can log in as the Dragon user. And I have, you know, the server manager and, and everything that the administrator user had because I am an admin on this. So there you go, guys. That is how you set up an AD server and create a user. So if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.